I'm doing well. Uh, I'm here to introduce today the founder of Archbee. It's a ultra fast wiki and knowledge base. It's going to help businesses streamline their systems. And we have so much exciting information to share with you guys for the next few days. So please give me a warm welcome to Dragos. Dragos, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to go over just a little bit of history about Archbee, a little bit about yourself, so that way people get to know you and why it's so important for businesses to streamline their SOPs using proper communication tools to not only take care of business, but also to scale. So why don't we quickly go into a brief history about your education or your career, tell us about yourself, uh, where you're from, and we can get started there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But first, let me... Um... Let me start the video because I feel a bit uncomfortable with only you showing your face here. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's something blocked on your side, I, I think. Uh, I can't start a video because the host has stopped it. Uh, let's see. Well, let's get you started first while I figure that out. Sure. So guys, I'm really happy to be here uh, to kickstart the whole process of launching uh, ArchB on PitchGround. Uh, I'm Dragos. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I started my career around 2010 uh, after graduating uh, computer science and automatics close to my hometown, Craiova and Bucharest in Romania. Uh, I did a couple of years working for a couple of startups uh, but also in the enterprise space. But after that, uh, I got a sense that I need to do something, build something for myself because I was getting a bit well uh, on the financial side. So I, I, I thought, why not try to do this stuff myself? Uh, and uh, the first thing I started with was actually consultancy. And because uh, the last couple of years I was a software architect. Uh, I thought, why not use my skills to get some money and at the same time learn some things and help some great companies get off the ground. That's awesome. Can you tell us more about uh, those projects and how you were able to transition to where you are right now? Yeah, sure. Th this was the plan actually. So. Having gigs as a software architect, it's, it's a bit different than a regular engineering gig as a freelancer because it's usually very short. So as a software developer, you might work for a year with a company, but as an architect, your uh, time span is like something like two weeks to two months because you get stuff done for them. You help them get off the ground. You set up some good practices for their internal stuff. And then you are basically done. Sometimes they come off like one year after and ask for new advice and stuff, but that's basically the time span, two weeks, two months. And because uh, it's so short, I basically I think I had something like 50 clients over the span of two and a half years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I learned a lot of stuff from working with that many of companies. They were very diverse actually uh, from very small companies with three or four people to bigger companies like Maersk that maybe had 200 developers working on an internal project uh, and I saw a recurring theme this is actually the intro to RFP this is the good story I guess uh, companies that were caring about their internal documentation and knowledge and sharing that knowledge with newer people and uh, actually the, the older people, the, I mean the veteran people in the company would benefit from that too. Uh, companies that cared about this stuff tended to be more successful than the ones that uh, didn't care about it. Right. But of course, correlation is, is not causation, uh, but it, it was a very strong signal for me and I couldn't, I couldn't uh, leave it alone until I found out what was going on. So the, the video is still not on. Is this something I need to do? Uh, don't worry about the video. 
Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, uh, the companies that were actually caring about documentation were more successful and the ones that didn't were struggling to build great products and deliver great services for their customers. That makes uh, sense. I've worked in companies before where there was no documentation and because they lacked the ability to communicate within their own team, if you can't manage that, how can you communicate to your customer, right? Exactly. If, if you cannot get your stuff together internally, it's less likely that you'll be able to do it for your customers externally. And because it's a culture, it's a company culture thing. Right. The companies that get this right are more likely to succeed. It's not a guarantee, but it's definitely better. It increases your chances. Uh, and when I started looking at the problem and maybe think about a solution to it, I, I noticed that most uh, teams in a, in a modern company, for example, engineers, designers, product managers, executives, uh, sometimes even freelancers and consultants that were coming from the outside, uh, were, were having very diverse documentation patterns. Uh, engineers were documenting in wikis and Git uh, designers in uh, local notes apps like Apple Notes or Google Keep or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, project managers were very close to Jira, so they were more likely to document stuff in Confluence, which is which is the the sibling from the same company, the sibling product. Uh, executives were most likely communicating over email and losing lots of knowledge there uh, on the road, and. I thought about what would take to build something that is central, but at the same time, doesn't leave certain groups of people behind in the company. Because what I noticed when I was looking at the market was that what was available to solve this problem, because there's obviously a big problem and many other are trying to solve it. Uh, I saw that uh, they were just generic text editors with some good organization of the documents. But they were actually not helping any in any any types of teams specifically. They were just glorified text editors. Gotcha. So I'm trying to get a bit into the competition and how RGB is different there. Okay. Uh, so I was looking, let's see, what are the core features that would help engineering teams, for example, uh, build great documentation and of course it starts with uh, software architecture diagrams with api docs with uh, internal notes about bottlenecks uh, internal notes about uh, why they picked a certain architecture or what might come as a hardship down the road and i tried to figure out what it would take to put this in a product I started with engineering teams and I thought there would be a great niche at the beginning. So I built diagrams into the software, I built API docs into the software, change logs, bunch of stuff that engineers use day to day in their documentation needs. Of course, they don't actually do it, do it because most of them don't have the culture to do it. But I think that having the tooling would be one thing that would nudge them to maybe do it. And for, from the first batches of the customers I got to RHB, that, that was actually a bit true. So engineers were more likely to do it when they have specialized tools for them. Of course, it didn't change it uh, 360, <laughs> uh, 180, but uh, it did help. So I started thinking about what else could I bring into the software to be more valuable to these companies. And uh, then I thought about designers. What do they need? And designers actually had a plethora of, of tools that they were using, like Figma, Envision, uh, Sketch, and many other tools that they were doing their work in. And uh, sometimes these tools are not very collaborative. Just the recent ones, like Figma, started doing this. But designers need to talk about that stuff too, especially when the culture is very remote. 
when you have two designers working, one from Europe, one from USA, it's it's less likely that they'll they'll be able to get together on a, on a Zoom call and discuss stuff. And even if they do, that information will get uh, will get buried when other designers join the team or when they leave the team. So I started integrating all these tools that designers use. Then I launched and I saw a bunch of customers using the software and most of them were asking me, okay, this is working great for our internal needs. But what about the customers? Maybe I want to share something with them. And the initial thing that I built, just sharing individual documents was actually not enough. They wanted to share groups of documents. So I built this functionality that would allow them to, to share these spaces with the customers. So basically uh, but, sorry? A knowledge base? Yes, a knowledge base. So I basically I transformed the whole editing experience with uh, another layer that le uh, lets them uh, share the whole space of, of, uh, of uh, documents and knowledge. That turned out to be so great that most companies asked me if I could put that on their own domain. So some companies actually have docs.theircompany.com uh, hosted by RHB. Uh, so I just added stuff as customers asked me for this stuff. Uh, I felt kind of bad doing it because sometimes it was actually one singular customer that was asking me for, to do it. And I, I thought this, this can't scale or something, but I actually did it. I, I didn't have anything better to do, so I did it. But it always turned out that uh, more customers needed that, and they were very happy when we launched that, and they didn't even have to tell us they needed it. <laughs> that was <a> very good. <laughs> That's the best thing, right? When you can think for your customer and letting your product sell itself. Yeah. Just being proactive, just getting something from one customer that's valuable to them and then releasing it and letting other people know will be uh, of tremendous value. And they'll be able to upgrade the newer plans and give you more money for it and because it's actually bringing more value to, the, to their experience. So it sounds like you have a, an all-in-one system where it's beneficial for not only agencies but freelancers as well. I can see how somebody who is like, a WordPress developer, for example, can do an FAQ that's public facing, but internally he has his uh, onboarding documentation and all his other processes uh, all in one place. So that way, every time he gets a new client, he just literally can just copy and paste from your system. Am I correct? Definitely. I've seen, uh, I have customers that are singularly using the, pro individually using the product. Uh, some of them are just taking notes for themselves to organize their thoughts or uh, processes. We have some small uh, widgets that let you create tasks, something like Trello. And most people that are working alone are using that just to organize their stuff. It's like a combination between, I don't know, uh, a notes app and uh, Trello. And it's very beneficial. So yeah, definitely uh, individual developers and freelancers can use that too. But also on the agency side, like you mentioned, I think something like 30% of the initial customers on RHB were agencies, software development and agencies. And when I asked them about what they're getting from RHB was another thing I didn't actually know what, how it would work. So when I built spaces, uh, I built it for another purpose. But agencies saw it as an opportunity to, to, to group and categorize their projects because most agencies, or especially software development agencies, would have multiple customers and they would need to have documentation for each one of their projects. The agencies were very happy about that. And especially the sharing part because uh, what I personally noticed between my clients when I was a uh, a consultant, uh, agencies were having trust issues with their customers. I don't know why, but it, it, it always felt like they were at each other's throats. Uh, agencies were feeling overworked and th their customers were feeling like uh, they 
didn't get enough for their money or things were moving too slow. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying RGB solves this thing, but it actually helps when you expose your internal processes and what's going on inside to your customers, they'll definitely feel you are more professional and they're definitely going to give you more time to breathe and time to do stuff the right way. So basically it gives companies uh, or businesses the ability to be transparent with their customers. So with this, is it a, um, like a timeline set up? Like how, how do you create this user interface? Uh, it's not a time-based thing. So if you think about uh, Jira or Asana or, or something like that, they are very uh, time-based tools. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about uh, what's going on on the inside of the company. How are they thinking about solving the problem? What processes and what know-how they accumulated while building their product? For example, uh, I had a customer that had a big corporation from the United States that uh, was a big uh, accumulation of newspapers. Mm -hmm. And they were building a paywall for, for that company. And the company didn't actually know what was taking so long. So they had these tasks in Jira and it was pretty obvious what they were doing, but going deeper on that issue, they, they couldn't figure out what was so hard about it. And when, uh, when, when one of the architects there uh, decided to uh, build great documentation for what they were doing, for example, uh, why, is the, why is the Stripe integration taking so long? Because they had a very custom mechanism to implement and they had to build on top of Stripe something that wasn't Stripe native, so it wasn't that e as easy. Uh, the software architecture, they had a Postgres database and they wanted to migrate it to MySQL and stuff there was not as easy as they, an as they anticipated. Of course, you can say that verbally, but when you write it down and, and put your thoughts and structure and organize them in a, in a neat document, your customer is going to have more trust in you. He's going to think you're more professional and seeing your thoughts laid out in a, in a structured and readable way, he's going to give you more time and more benefit of a doubt to uh, let him know that you are doing the right thing for him and his company. Right. And this is even more important when companies are becoming remote because you cannot be face to face with people. You cannot read their actual cues about. So sometimes you, people can lie and everybody can spot them when they are face to face. But over the internet, it's very hard to do, do so. But it's also very hard to do so when you have to lay it out, write it down. That's true. So that's a secondary benefit, I think, for the whole thing. So it basically helps establish that trust because now clients can tell that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing instead of you just making things up along the way. Exactly. That's you can awesome. always add a new task in Jira, but they're not gonna know why you added it and why it was needed. And you can always uh, drag, uh, drag the left bar to, to get more time and you can always explain it in the meeting, but when you have a, a document to write it down, it's very, very useful. And it's gonna be there, not just for the customer, for your whole team, for your manager, for your CEO. And of course, if they feel you, they are in the wrong, they're gonna take your side, not the customers. They're gonna know what side they need to push on, or they're gonna need what side they need to calm to, make it more balanced. I do not know if I'm explaining this right, but. It sounds right. Like it. Yeah. Uh, so you basically described multiple use cases for your product. Um, how would you say this is critical to scaling your business? How would streamlining all your standard operating procedures or SOPs um, help a company grow from, let's say a solopreneur to a team, to an agency or, or beyond? Oh my God, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the biggest uh, issues in companies and this, these kinds of products help go a long way in solving it. So 
let's talk about the uh, hypothetical case right now. You have a company, a startup, and you are a couple of people as usual. You're not going to have three million to hire twenty people or thirty people since from the beginning. So you're basically gonna, always going to be less than five people. Right. Most likely two or three people. So when you are at the beginning, everything can be held down in your mind. There's no problem. It's actually faster to be that way. You don't need to document. Document documenting actually. Uh, makes you go slower. So when you are three people, everything you communicate with the other person face to face, maybe you are at the same table and you know all the stuff about the company. Everything is in your mind. You don't need to write it down anywhere. You go to five people, you add the support, you add maybe a CMO, you add maybe a secondary developer. Things start to get rougher, but you're still, you're still okay uh, keeping everything in your brain. At five people, even at even at six, seven people, maybe you are still okay with uh, holding everything in your mind. This is what I noticed. But uh, when you cross the line and you go over ten people, communication becomes very hectic, especially direct and synchronous communication. Uh, you have to keep up with all these people. You don't know what they're doing. Uh, you don't know what they know when they onboard the, the company. You actually think they might be able to know stuff after one or two months, but they actually don't know pretty much anything about the company. They might be able to do certain tasks after two months, but they still don't know the company. They still don't know how you got there, what's important, how you got there. And they still don't know the, the backbone of the things you went through to understand how you got there and help you carry on. So I would say 10 people is the, is the threshold where the pain becomes obvious of not having uh, stuff documented. Of course, it's very useful to start early. I wouldn't say it's useful to start when you are two people, but when you reach three or four, it's definitely a good time investment to start documenting on stuff. Because when you onboard new people, instead of taking six months for them to onboard and understand everything about the company and you wasting your time explaining to them this this and that and everything you know maybe you don't remember everything you know and you can't lay it out to them so instead of doing that they have these documents that they can read and this is what actually people like to do when they're uh when they're onboarding a new company right they they're a bit they're a bit uh, afraid that it not might work for them. They don't talk too much. They don't, uh, they're, they're trying to study the landscape, trying to understand what everybody's doing and how strong they are compared to them. And uh, they would rather, most people would rather read something, even if it takes them two weeks and understand the whole, the whole thing, than actually asking uh, the CEO or the CTO every day what needs to be done uh, i mean not what needs to be, what needs to be known in order to accomplish the tasks and yeah they people don't like to do this because they actually sometimes feel they need to do more uh, and they don't like to look stupid asking many questions in the beginning so <laughs> this actually uh, it's way worse than it seems because People don't like to ask questions and you, and you wake up after five months with somebody on your company that doesn't know pretty much anything. They can accomplish some tasks, but they don't understand the company. They, they don't understand the thought process, how you got there, how you want to advance, the vision, the, how the marketing is set up. Uh, and as you know, in the beginning, companies need generalists. They need to think about all these problems and find ways to fit them all together so you can grow with them. Absolutely. Uh, I definitely know that experience. I've worked with several startups myself and every company that onboarded me as a startup never had any documentation in place and it would take anywhere from two to three weeks just to, you know, get used to their way of working. You know, I was literally flying by the seat of my pants because uh, every day was something new going on and they were like, oh, uh, we forgot to tell you this. And uh, oh yeah, 
don't exactly. forget about that. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? You never told me any of this. Uh, where is this documented? And they're like, oh yeah, we didn't document it. So for me, documenting is critical for uh, my day-to-day uh, uh, work life. And if I don't have processes in place or known to me, how can I work on that level, right? So I feel like your product is perfect for someone like myself because I definitely appreciate tools that allow me to not only document everything I'm doing, but also to share with other people because I need other people to understand where I'm coming from, why I work the way I work. And having a resource like this is priceless. You can't put a dollar amount on it because it lets you scale. It lets you uh, help other people understand what you're doing so that way they get excited about your mission too. Definitely. The yeah, the oh yeah effect. Oh yeah, after nine months, I forgot I need to tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> and basically nobody can fix it in, in the current form of work. <laughs> it's only gonna be fixed when remote comes uh, when remote comes for full force to the, the world and people have to implement the stuff that I'm talking about. Yep. Oh, uh, try putting your video on now. There wow, it's working. <laughs> All right. Hey, we met. I dressed, up. <laughs> I dressed up and you weren't letting me having the video, man. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Technical problems. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're actually incorporating this uh, software that we're using for our summits. So changing something in those settings uh, reverted our privacy settings. So we were able to fix that. Now, now you're here. <laughs> now yeah. everybody gets to see who you are. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, like you. I think your product is amazing. I'm very excited for it to launch next week. We're actually going to be talking about several other topics. Uh, so for tomorrow, we're going to be talking about why eliminating miscommunication is critical for um, not only your business, but why you don't want to have miscommunication with your clients, with your uh, partners. And we're going to talk about how you can use Archby to streamline those uh, communication systems through the features, through their strengths. And then on Monday, we're going to actually have use case, real use case examples and how you can do this for your business uh, if you're watching here on this call. And it will help you learn how to use this tool right away because I know a lot of people have reservations about implementing a new system, implementing new tools, but Dragos is going to be able to walk you through step by step, whether you're an agency, whether you're a freelancer, how you can implement uh, his tool into your day-to-day -day work life. And as you go about learning these uh, features, feel free to visit his website. I'm going to drop that link in the comments. And we're going to be able to help you answer all of those questions as we go out and explore this new tool that we're going to be launching next week. So I see a couple people on the, on the webinar. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, we're here to help you learn more about the product, learn more about uh, how we can help you incorporate this into your business. And if you just want to say hi, say hi. Um, so Dragos, going back to our conversation, yep. and uh, basically, you know, just to recap, who is this product for? It's for new companies. New companies, it's the generic thing, but I would say New, new companies, newer type companies are startups, agencies, niche product companies, uh, companies, I would say beneath 100 people that are trying to scale up even to 1000 people. Uh, anybody personally trying to organize and structure his thoughts, uh, and this also works when you're in a company. It, it also helps your, your colleagues understand you better and understand your strengths. It also helps your boss understand you better and understand your strengths. Uh, I would say it's, it's I don't wanna go too far, but it, it, it's very good for any type of company. But I would, I would stick to, for now, I wanna help smaller companies, something like between two or three people to 100 because I feel that's where I can have more, uh, the, the, the most uh, impactful experience with uh, customers right now. 
down the line that might add some other types of companies. But I think this is a, this is a very good problem to solve. And I feel very excited uh, that I stuck to this and I built this and I'm showing this to the world and feel very exciting to, uh, excited to be, bring this to pitch ground. And I know you guys have a, a very nice audience uh, of uh, companies that maybe are going through these struggles that I, that I'm confident ArchB can help solve. I agree 100%. I'm, I'm personally probably going to purchase a couple of uh, uh, coupons just to use it myself because I have so many uh, processes that I use on a regular basis and I actually work with a virtual assistant. So being able to document what I'm doing or giving uh, direction to somebody without having to sit there and uh, try to explain something over and over and over again. If I can just document it one time, share it with somebody, I'll be good to go. Yeah, that's great ROI. Documented what once, shared multiple times, and you've got plenty of time saved there. Exactly. So time is money, right? Yeah. Perfect. So let's see if I have any questions here on our Facebook Live. So it looks like we're pretty clear. I think people are very excited about what we have accomplished with this first webinar. Uh, do you have any other uh, information that you would like to share about ArchB before we go? Uh, I would say I, I've said enough for today. This, I, I think this was supposed to be a, a short intro, but I already went overboard with explaining. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it's enough. Thank you for having me here and thank you uh, for listening the audience and hope to see you tomorrow for the, uh, the more advanced uh, intro into the, the product. Perfect. So just as a, as a reminder to everybody, we're going to be going live at 10 a.m. Eastern again uh, here on Facebook Live. You can also register for our webinar series for ArchB. I'll drop the link in the comments below. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to message me on Facebook or shoot me an email and I'll get that taken care of for you. So thank you for your time, Dragos. We really appreciate you being here today. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow and we'll talk soon. Have a great day, guys. Right. See you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.